Hello everybody, it's Lorelai and welcome back to episode 2, the start of the tea party. It's finally, truly gonna be the end of episode 2 and next week I shall wrap up episode 2 with my final thoughts and just go over some of the locked room mysteries and whatnot. And then we will start episode 3 at long last. I also have heard your concerns about potentially getting spoiled, whether it's like intentionally or unintentionally. So I shall hold the live stream off. In any case, without further ado, let's just get right into today's episode. Rosa woke up from her doze. It must have been a very deep sleep. Her mind was fuzzy and she wasn't thinking clearly. Where was she? It felt like some mansion, but at least it didn't seem to be the Ushiro Miya family mansion. She was in a room that looked like a parlor. And there was some tea that had been prepared. It had almost certainly been prepared for her. Sparkles like gold leaf were dancing around the room and it looked very dreamlike. She eventually realized that they were gold butterflies which made that stand out even more. There was someone across from her Female, a lady, the witch of the portrait. She looked like she was having a one-sided conversation. She was probably talking to Rosa, but Rosa's mind was clouded up by a deep fog and she didn't have a clue what was being said. <laughs> I don't trust her. Her demands? What is she? Talking about. I don't know. I don't know. Tada. <laughs> Finally, Rosa started to feel the blood flowing through her body. Her movements were still sluggish, and she couldn't even voice the words she was thinking. <laughs> The witch blew on her pipe and seven colors of smoke covered the area. What is she? Oh. When she did, the inside of the parlor had suddenly become filled with stacks of gold ingots. It looked like a shining gold colored wall. If each ingot was worth tens of millions of yen, how much would all of this be worth? It seemed sinful to even think of that number. しかし 
人の世は難しいどれほど空高く積み上げた黄金であろうとも満たされぬものがあることを知っている埋められぬ隙間があることを知っているわらわはそれをないがしろにしないしそれこそが魔女であるわらわにしか与えられぬ褒美であると考えているそなたのそれをわらわが埋めてやるというのはどうかなるほどこれはいいわらわにしか与えられぬものだそなたもさぞや喜ぼう What is it? 口にせずともよいそなたの心の隙間など顔に書いてあるからすぐにわかるぞ<笑> Rosa felt a touch of discomfort at this witch who kept on talking even though she herself hadn't uttered a single word but since she still couldn't speak well and found it difficult even to move a finger she could do nothing about it and was unable to do anything but listen そなたの深き心の傷はどこまで遡れば癒せるのかこれは深い深い時に破片を飲み込んだまま傷口が閉じてしまうこともあるそういう傷は見た目には癒えていても永遠にうずきを感じ続けるものだ完全に治すため I wonder if she's talking about the wounds from Rosa's family, the trauma. As the witch spoke, she was staring deep into Rosa's eyes. What in the world was she peering at? Rosa felt uncomfortable, but she couldn't look away. すでに生まれながらにして運命づけられたものかこれは何ともつらいもの言わずともよいわかるわかる Gradually, Rosa in turn was drawn into the witch's eyes I feel like I'm being tricked by Beatrice Somehow, she's tempting Rosa to give in Probably to submit to um, to the witch. Gradually, the world grew dark, spinning round and round as she was sucked in. Rosa, Rosa, how do you think you're so crazy? Oh, this is Krause's voice. I was trying to pin who it was. Haven't heard him in a very long time. Oh, that's Kraus Nisan's voice. Kraus Nisan is very grown up, so he's very smart. So he hated the stupid kid, Rosa. And he was a very scary person, and I was often hit, and my toys were taken from me and broken. Oh man. He would say it was a punishment because I did something bad, but I didn't really understand what that was or why I was being punished. I was always punished suddenly, and then after the fact, I was told in a contrived manner that it was a punishment for something or other. But it was always something I didn't remember doing. So he's just taking his anger out on Rosa then. So I really. Hated Kraus Nisan. Rosa, Rosa, must be Eva now. Doshte o mae wa sonna ni baka na no ka. Oh, that's Eva Nisan's voice. Eva Nisan is very grown up, so she's very smart. So she hated the stupid kid Rosa. And she was a very sly person, and I was often lied to, tricked, and bullied a lot. 
She would say it was because I was stupid, and that it was only natural for stupid people to be swindled by those smarter than them. So I wanted to become a wise person like Eva Nezan and listen to what she said. But when I obeyed her, for some reason, someone always got really mad at me. So I really hated Eva Nezan. Now I understand where Rosa is coming from. No wonder she didn't bat an eye at her siblings dying. She was more horrified at the manner of their deaths than anything, but she really hates them. I wonder what she'll say about Rudolph, though. Rose. Rose. Oh, that's Rudolf Nisan's voice. Rudolf Nisan is very shrewd. So he hated a stupid kid, Rosa. When Kraus Nisan was around, he was friendly with Kraus Nisan. When Eva Nisan was around, he was friendly with Eva Nisan. And when Kraus Nisan was around, he was violent like Kraus Nisan. And when Eva Nisan wasn't around, he played dirty like Eva Nisan. And even though he too was bullied most of the time, when Kraus Nisan and Eva Nisan went around, he gave me two people's worth of bullying. Oh, I see. So I really hated Rudolf Nisan. Oh, but these are my memories from when I was a kid. Quite a lot of unfair things happen when you're a kid. And you can't drag them out forever. In time, you bury them away in the far reaches of memory and forget them bit by bit. That is supposed to be what it means to grow up and become an adult. So becoming an adult is the same thing as separating yourself from all of those memories. My goodness. I think... I, I feel like I see this a lot in others sometimes. And so, no matter how much time passed, Rosa couldn't become an adult. Even though she had been blessed with a daughter called Maria and was called a mother, she didn't at all feel like she had become an adult. The witch pitied that. And she smiled, saying that she could heal that pain in herself. そなたは兄と姉に苦しめられた記憶が残らず、故にそれをもって褒美であると言われても納得はできない。上は癒してこそ満たされる。上そのものをなかったことにしても誰も感謝しない。日々の宝飾に感謝する若者がいないような。わか
kind of feels like she's talking about how Rosa's siblings were murdered in the chapel. The witch snapped her fingers, and even though the room was still filled with a mountain of gold and was already like something from another world, a fabulous tablecloth appeared on top of the table, and wonderful cooking was laid out, almost as though it was the opening of a banquet in a castle from some fairy tale. For an instant, Rosa felt a pleasurable surprise at how fabulous it was, but at the same time, she felt a bit of anticlimax, because she found herself thinking that being bullied by her siblings couldn't be wiped away by just one meal, no matter how delicious. Furniture? As the witch clapped twice, there were suddenly goat head servants there and they began to prepare the meal. I can only imagine what is food to someone like Beatrice and these demons. Would it be human flesh? Just like what happened to Kinzo? That's what I'm thinking. Imagine being served your siblings um flesh though. That that would be that would be weird. Well, not just weird, that would be horrible. <laughs> It really did look delicious, but Rosa's body still felt as heavy as lead, and there was no way she could eat. Maybe they also understood that. The goat head servants tied a napkin around Rosa's collar and gallantly brought a glass before dinner, a glass of before dinner alcohol to her mouth and even tilted it for her. She remembered an old servant who had once carried rice porridge to her mouth when she was laid up with a high fever. She couldn't drink it well, and it dripped down from her mouth, but she felt the fragrant sweetness spread throughout her mouth. Crimson golden drops? I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Sonata no Anio Asak Kinikake de Shibori Dasta. She no golden drop da kede so metearu. I knew things would not remain peaceful for long. Oh, goodness. <coughs> Rosa coughed violently, and the bright red that stained her face made it look as though she had coughed up blood. Sonata Drop of blood from Kraus? As the witch snapped her fingers, a bright red veil was pulled off something large which had not been there moments ago. The solemn and massive machine there was just like. A coffin for a large-sized person, with many large bulb-like things stuck to it, and it looked like a sinister torture device. By its unnerving shape, you could tell that it used manpower to tighten and pr compress something, and it seemed that there were still some squeezed dregs remaining inside, 
Ooh. Because of the bright red remains that stained it. When the witch snapped her fingers, suddenly, the human compressor began to shake. No, you could also hear a groan. It looked almost as though someone had been sleeping in that man-sized coffin and had woken up and was now struggling to get out. But that was wrong. What was inside had definitely been squeezed dregs. Using her magic, the witch had once again revived the squeezed dregs to how they had been before they were squeezed. Three goat head servants with muscular physiques approached the compressor and forcefully started tightening the large bulbs. As they did, an unearthly moan came from inside the coffin. Rosa thought she knew the owner of that voice. Oh, goodness. So it's not just one person? The witch had definitely said that only one golden drop could be taken from a single human. And yet, she had dozens of people's worth of golden drops from a single human. What does that mean? That the person has many human souls inside of them or something like that? Only a witch could do this. The golden witch Beatrice could kill a single human endlessly. I see. I still haven't forgotten that that's her... Um... Name? Moniker? In other words, before Beatrice, even death did not mean release. No, thank you. Even so, no thank you. <laughs> Once again, the goat head servants tilted the deep red glass against her mouth. Rosa attempted to close her lips in resistance. But the deep red liquid was relentlessly poured into her mouth, which was hanging open with shock. And the inside of her mouth was filled with a ghastly sweetness. It was definitely a fragrant sweetness. Her brother, who she had thought of so hatefully, and who had made her soak her pillow so many times, had died dozens of times over to tinge this wine crimson so it must have tasted sweet. But Rosa tried to spit it out. Because of that, the deep red wine that spilled out of Rosa's mouth made her look as if she was covered in blood. Hmm. If this ghastly substance was only the aperitive, aperitive? <laughs> Rosa couldn't help but feel uncomfortable about what would happen if this banquet continued. それは旬の野菜による二枚舌のサラダフーだ。お前がいつか食いちぎってやりたいと九歳の誕生日の日に願ったエヴァの舌で作った念願のサラダよ。Oh no! When Rosa heard the true nature of the pink-colored meat piled up in the salad, she had a sudden impulse to vomit her guts out. 
Furthermore, the goat servant stuck a fork in it and carried it to Rosa's mouth. <laughs> How sweet, soft, and enchanting it must have tasted in her mouth. After all, Eva's lies were always sweet, and young Rosa had always listened to them. So you could say that the taste of the stimulating pepper seasoning that had been added expressed the details of those lies well. Rosa spat out the tongue salad that kept being pushed into her mouth, covering it with saliva. But the goat head servants carefully returned it to the plate and carried it to Rosa's mouth over and over again. <laughs> As Rosa's tears dripped down, she resisted, half crazed. However, the only way she could resist was by refusing to swallow. Even if she didn't swallow it, the taste of the French dressing increasingly violated Rosa's mouth. Oh, that sounds disgusting. お前が死んだし、にもかかわらず裏切った人間たちを踏んだんに調理した。この宴をそなたの心が満足するまで永遠に続けようではないか。嬉しいだろ。後ろ見やろうぜ。嫌がるふりなんかするなよ。本当は嬉しいってのは分かってるんだぜ。笑いたくば笑えばいい。ムカつく兄貴姉貴の悲鳴の名前そうがないとご機
Suddenly, a muscular goat head cook was holding Maria under his arm. And Maria gazed at Rosa with a face that was just slightly sad. Mama, Maria no koto, jama datta. Jama janai. Happening. As Rosa spat out the food that was continually being carried to her mouth, as she was covered with mess and saliva and blood, she resisted filthily and screamed. Mama ga Maria no koto jama nara. Maria, taberare te mo heki. Oh my goodness. Datte, Maria wa itsu mo mama ni hidoi koto bakari. ママが男の人を連れてくるときも静かにできなかったママが男の人とお泊まりしてくるとき寂しくて暴れてお部屋を台無しにした勝手に探しに行って迷子になって警察のお世話になってママに恥をかかせた I'm so sorry Maria had to go through that 何日も帰ってこなくて泣いちゃって近所の人に慰めてもらってママに恥をかかせたこんなマリアだからママの迷惑になってる But I, I don't think this is really Maria who is speaking to Rosa I really don't think so 生まれてきてごめんなさいだからマリアはママのためにおいしいリンゴのオーブン焼きになるのそしたらママに初めてマリアがいてよかったって思ってもらえるかなマリアを食べて美味しかったって思ってもらえるかな<笑>美味しいよね冠類にむせべよ娘がここまで行ってるぜマナ娘とリンゴのオーブン焼きなんて最高のデザートこれだけ美味しい食材に育てられるなんてあんた<笑>最高の母親だぜ後ろ見やろうぜ<笑> Oh goodness <笑>ママ今までありがとうバイバイ<笑>待って待ってマリア違うのもうやめてもうやめてこんなの嫌私はこんなこと望んでないもうやめてもう許して嫌やめて口に入れないで This, this might be an inappropriate place to say this, um, but I just can't help but feel like nothing is real right now and everything is staged to make Rosa aware of her actions or to teach her a lesson, something along those lines. I don't know, I, I feel like the real Maria wouldn't say things that would purposefully um, agitate Rosa or provoke her with saying things like um, bringing shame to her or you know the whole spiel about um, not spiel but the whole thing about bring a man over and then Maria ruining it I feel like Maria wouldn't say that so I, I don't believe it's Maria I feel like everything is just Beatrice's illusion at this point and if it's not the power of a witch then it's the power of Everyone's acting. Waga motenashi ni manzuku shite moraeta ka? Nara ba, sonata ni wa mitomete morao. Wara wa ga majo de aru koto. Sengen se, ushiro mi ya Rosa wa Beatrice o majo to mitomeru to sengen se yo. So, this is the thing that Beatrice wants, um, Rosa to do. This is what she's exchanging with Rosa so by healing so-called healing Rosa she wants Rosa to accept her as a witch 
And then that means that Rosa's acceptance of Beatrice is really worth so much more than anything else. And so, what will Rosa do? Everything is an illusion. Let's bet on that. ついに認めさせたぞ。小坂式バトラはすでに屈服し、黄金鏡に招かれながら我らを否定するオロカモのローザにも認めさせた。完璧だ。It's <笑> Surely this is not the end though. So even after Rosa accepted her, Maria is still gonna be uh, roasted. Battler? That's very vulgar. Ooh, what happened? An arm grabbed the back of the witch's head and smashed her face into the table. As it did, the witch broke to pieces, turned into a group of gold butterflies, and reformed into her body a short distance away. I am extremely, really, really ex enjoying this turn off events. Kaguto no battler, please no. Is it really Maria then? まだ we will not give in. We won't give in. ローザおばさんが粘ってくれたおかげで再び戦う記録を取り戻せたぜ。This this man he was broken to the depths of his soul and capitulated to me. I see. He doesn't know when to give up. Just what I expect from Ushiro Miyakinzo's grandson. So the chick of a phoenix is a phoenix after all. So <laughs> わらわの期待する後ろ宮バトラとはそうでなくてはならん。わらわを否定してみろ。そしてそれを
必ずドローを吸って立ち上がるそして必ず蹴りをつける男の喧嘩はな負けを認めない限りどれだけ叩きのめされようと負けじゃねえんだよ一本取られただけで俺が参ると思うなよ楽しませてやるぜベアトリーチャー And now he's completely flipped it over.、Um, and Beatrice is the one that's gonna have to entertain him, I guess. Oh! They switched places again. Or like. From the tea party to purgatory, I mean. To the mansion. Prepare for the next game. I think she might have said this in the previous one too, but. Oh man, I don't get it. What does it mean? Why are the furniture s making preparations? What preparations do they need to make? And the battler that is here is also the same battler that was in. Episode 2, but it's also the same one in episode 1? Am I, am I tripping? そうなったの逃げ工場のほとんど、わらわが赤で叩き潰した。その上で、さらにどのような屁理屈で言い逃れて見せるのか。礼拝堂の鍵、ジェシカの部屋の鍵、主要人室の鍵、夏日の部屋
ベルンカステル教と戦える機会を賜れるとは本当に愉快よ。So now it's a fight between Beatrice and Bern Castle? ええ、私も愉快よ。そこまで自信満々のあなたがボロボロに負けるところが見たくて、はるばるやってきたんだもの。<laughs> oh man, <laughs> it feels like she's talking about us. <sighs> oh, maybe not. <gasps> Maria? Oh no, it's not. But who? <laughs> oh. So this is the one that they were talking about that Brinkestel fought. But how should I call her? Lambda Delta? And she has like Halloween decorations on her. What is she? I feel like with every episode's tea party, well, this is not tea party, but the question mark one, it feels like a new witch is introduced every time. バカな子ね。私に勝てたのはちょっとした運と相性の問題だと。どうして気づかなかったのかしら。それで天狗になって、よりにもよってベアトリーチに喧嘩を売るとは身の程知らずもいいとこね。ベアトリーチは強いわよ
ちろん負ける気はないけど私たちには勝敗以上に意義がある。何しろわらわたちは退屈を愛さない<笑> The tree witches giggled, cackled, and guffawed その通りよ感謝するわベアコやっと退屈から逃れられそうだわせいぜい私を楽しませなさいラムダデルタと二人がかりでそうさせてもらうぞ<笑>そうと決まればベアと早速作戦会議をするわよその子の弱点は知り尽くしてるそれを全て伝授してあげるわにもかかわらずラムダデルタ卿は親ぶれになられたと<笑>もう教えてけない教えてけないくーしないご人であるなラムダデルタ卿はでしょ面倒よろしくねあれで寂しがり屋なのよなるほど今流行りのなんとかというやつかニューファングルワッチャーマッカレッツワッさすがはラムダデルタ卿最先端でおられる<笑>もう行きなさいよあの子あなたが追っかけてくるの待ってるわよ I really want to know what their relationship is like since they always have matches against each other it seems like and even though they seem like they have rivalry between all of them They also seem to care for each other. I, I don't know, I would love to learn about their lore. So, there was a little bit of a game. But I t h i g it's good I think it's good that I've gotten used to Beatrice's extreme expressions. At least I'm not gonna get scared too much from now on. Will she talk to us? ごめんなさいね。She is, right? 厄介なのが来たけど、気にしないで。それより、ひどいことになったわね。私もラムダとのゲームで、だいぶ悲惨な末路というのを経験してきたつもりでいるけど、今回のは、軍を抜いてひどいわ。What, what does she mean? あなたが膝を抱いて、心を閉ざしてしまう気持ちもわからなくない。こんな末路あと何度もやられたら100年を待たずに心が殺されてしまうわ。What does she mean? Does she mean that if we keep losing the match against Beatrice that we will eventually, eventually lose hope? ベアトにカンパされてしまったから白状する。今のあなたはかつてラムダの世界にとらわれていた頃の私にそっくりなの。Sorry, I feel like new lore just dropped and a hint just dropped. Um, it, are we trapped inside Beatrice's world? Is that why we are seeing things that we wouldn't typically see? But even so, wouldn't that mean that Beatrice is still a witch? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, but let's hear her out. Kakokuna Ume no Melo ni Tojiko Merare. Major ni Iyo ni Itaburare Tayer. Watashi no Soko Kara Umareta Major. What? Dakara. Anata no Ane ni Atar no Kamoshiren. So Burn Castle was born out of Lambda's world, and now maybe something else is happening in Beatrice's world? だからあなたに力を貸そうと決めたのしかし私の運命に比べてもあなたのそれは
あまりにも無言同情どころか涙までもらってしまいそうなあまりに悲惨な運命 What is my fate? でもどうかくじけないでベアトになんか決して屈しないで OK We will endeavor to do this I will not submit to Beatrice I will I will try my absolute best not to fall into her traps and to keep denying her ゲーム版を少しだけ見させてもらったけどあまりに卑劣かつ狡猾な仕掛けで Oh my goodness, the thing about game boards again その舞台仕掛けのいやらしさは多分ラムダデルタのゲーム版のそれをはるかに上回るわ Scenic tricks What does she mean? So like special effects? Things that will confuse your eyes And your ears? しかも恐ろしいことにあの子は駒を刺す時常に最善手を指しているわけではないのここがラムダとは大きく異なる点ラムダは勝つために常に最善手で圧倒的な数の駒を指してくる He says I'm gonna assume mean the people in the game しかしベアトはたまにわざと手を抜いて駒を刺してくるの困ったことに相手の刺してから手の内を探ろうとしている私たちにとって But this would make it difficult because we will always be looking at what the best move she will play is but she will intentionally not play the best move to throw us off The track. It just reminds me of what Battler said about how you can't predict what your opponent's move is if you look at it from the view of a human, but your opponent is a witch. あいてにノイズを与えるかもしれないけれど、貴重な一手を損していることに違いはない。つまり、スケール余地はゼロじゃないってこと。あなたには信じられないだろうけども、今回のゲームもそう。あれだけ圧倒的な展開に見えて、
できあなたも努力なさいもしまだ膝を抱いているなら早く立ち直ってえっとこういう時なんて言ったかしらえっとそ,そのわいし She seems so hesitant and、um, not self assured at all now. Maybe it's a glimpse into who she was in Lambda's world. Fight. Oh. Oh? Me. Me. Pa. What? What is it? I feel like that's something I did not get at all. Oh? <laughs> 本当にざまあないったらありゃしないそれにしても Her eyes look so scary when it's dark like this 相変わらずベルンが選ぶコマはショーボーイはねチェスだってそうでしょコマが全部ポーンだったら勝ち目ゼロでしょコマが全部ルークやビショップだったら絶対負けやしないわ So she's saying that she has better and stronger Pieces than what Burn Castle chose. Ma, then I got a sweet yawn in a day. Skin up a shocker of Kumos, Smete Iwayot, the Itara. Beru no Yats, Onasaki no Kuki, Yomezni, the Mochino Pon, Tim, but you just as it as you take a hajimete. Sorry, but that's a chess terminology that has gone straight over my head. Nani or a Anano, Makedem, Nandemona in the car. ああ思い出しただけでもムカムカするわそんなわけでこの私はベルンがギャフンとする顔を見ないと腹の虫が収まらないわけそんなわけなんでベルンのコマのあんたがそんなざまなんで私は最高にいい気分なわけ Now that's interesting So we, the readers, are her piece A chess piece on this game board as well Now that's something I haven't considered At all. しかもあの子はあれでいて本当に負けず嫌いだからきっと今頃悔しくって歯ぎしりをして涙をポロポロ流してるわよ本当に邪魔ないわよ<笑><笑>ほらあんたも一緒に笑いなさいよ<笑>あんたまだ膝を抱いてるのベアトにちょっと本気出されたくらいでもうそのざまなの ?I'm 100% convinced that they are talking to us as the readers 情けないったらありゃしないあんまり情けないからちょっとだけ力を貸してあげるわこの宇宙最強で絶対の魔女であるダイラムダデルタ教が。あんたの絶望的な勝率をほんのちょっぴりだけ絶対に近づけてやるわ感謝なさいベアトリーチャはね確かに残酷で強力な魔女かもしれないけれどこの私の敵じゃないなぜか甘いからよあの子はあと数手でチェックメイトできる局面を作りつつわざと詰めないくだらないコマを取ったり余計なコマを置いてより一方的な盤面にしてみたい When she says put too many pieces it reminds me of the scene where Goda and the rest were finished off by the goat heads 早い話が価値が見えると遊び出す悪い癖があるってわけあんたやベルンにとって辛い様々な攻め手のほぼ全てが私から見ればやりすぎの無駄もいいところつまりそれこそ好きでありチャンスでもあるってわけね ?No, I don't see it 
恐れるに値する相手じゃないでしょう手段と目的を時に履き違えるそして悪い遊びが過ぎるその結果自ら弱点を作り晒してさえいる私のような最強の魔女から見ればなんでこんな余裕ぶったことをするのか理解できない自ら勝率を下げてるなんてね Oh I guess in the end for Beatrice it seems like she prioritizes her escape from boredom more than actually having Battler submit to her Maybe that's what I will go with でもまそのせいでベルンみたいな相手を読んでかわすタイプの魔女には非常に相性が悪いってわけよ読みが効かないからベルンにとっては私みたいな素直で正直なタイプは読みやすくてやりやすいんでしょうね Obedient and honest? Somehow I don't quite get that from her ムカつくことにまあでも私みたいな超火力タイプはペアコみたいな軽くて広い弾幕タイプなんか真正面から打ち破れちゃうわけだから相性のじゃんけんみたいなものかしら私がパーならベアとかグーベルンはチョキってとこねまあどうでもいいことかしら確かに私のパーはベルンのチョキに負けるけどパーよりはるかにすごい超パーだったらチョキにだって勝てるでしょうん、つまりこのラムダデルタ卿は超パーってわけあっ<笑>ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ一見すると本当に趣味の悪いやつだと思うでしょ I do. <laughs> I think she does. 違うのよ。あんたが立ち直って戻ってくるのを期待して、時間を潰して待ってるだけなのよ。わざと憎まれるようなことをして、あんたの義憤を引き出そうと言うてね。ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ。In the end, I wonder if her matchup is truly with Battler or with us. She helped us raise our winning percentage of winning up to certainty. So I guess I have to thank her for this. She's such a scenery. この宇宙最強の魔女の私はベルンに負けて最強の座を奪われちゃったのそれで私はベルンからその座を取り戻さなくちゃならないわけだけどもしここでベルンがベアトに負けちゃったら最強の座が今度はベアトに移っちゃうじゃないまあ別に私はベアトから奪い返す方が楽だからいいわけだけどそれじゃあ私の腹の虫が収まらないのねベルンは私が打ち負かすそして最強の座も私が取り返すの別にあんたに力を貸すわけじゃないんだからねベルンを泣かせたら許さないんだから The relationship is just so strange Is, is that the end? No way I think it is. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. A new game board has been added and new elements may be accessed from the title screen. I do want to take a look at the character menu. But, oh! Oh! We changed! Oh my, it's looking pretty. But it looks like... Possibly... No, I was gonna say it looks like the chapel, but I don't think it is. Pretty for sure though. I like this better than <laughs> the previous one. But yeah, I want to take a look at what starts is. Good morning. This is a surprise that even now you do not surrender. The Golden Witch has exceedingly high expectations of you. Have you perhaps also come to realize the structure of this world? I... 
Maybe, maybe I do. There can be no victory without knowing the rules. Please enjoy a hearty game with the witch. The difficulty level is fair. Fair for you and fair for the witch. Hmm. So compare it to episode 2, which says that the difficulty is first rate. This one is fair. But how fair? What does episode 1 says? It's standard. Hmm. I would say that the structure of this world is that we are all in Beatrice's game board. This is her world. That the entire of Rokenjima is false, it's fake, it's all constructed. Something like that. I mean, just coupled with the fact that some people seem to be aware of their fates, like with Rudolph in episode 1. And I just want to highlight that episode 1 says, Let us begin on the trodden road. Doesn't it refer to the fact that this has been happening over and over before? Or that it at least has happened before? And that's why the pieces seem to know their fate? Are they all actors? Are they all furniture? I don't know. Um, there was also an interesting line said by Rosa in episode 2 where she said that they are isolated from the rest of the world and that everything... You cannot believe what you see. Something like that, I remember. I cannot wait. I'm very hopeful looking at this new scenery. I like it a lot. Let's look at characters. Because I didn't get to look at the final characters. Oh, but I want to look at the witch's side first. <gasps> okay. <laughs> I was seeing... Why are there so many people now? And, and it's because of uh, Beatrice's sticks. Oh, they are sisters. <laughs> they really have the exact same face and outfit. Okay, let's just start with Beatrice. We already know about her. I want to look at Burn Castle. Oh, oh, okay. She was a human. Her vast power is capable of creating all kinds of miracles, but her heart has broken a bit as a result. Oh, she has a cat tail. That's cute. Um... But yes, she was a human, and Lambda Delta once imprisoned her for a within a cruel fate and toyed with her the entire time. I wonder if what we are experiencing now is the same thing that Burncastel went through. She's unable to un abandon others who are caught within a similar fate. In theory, she holds the strongest power of any witch, but in practice, that is no more realistic than saying that a piece of paper can reach the moon if you fold it a hundred times. And fold it a hundred times, she did. My goodness. She is... respectable, for sure. As for Lambda Delta, she is the witch of certainty who has lived for a thousand years. Can I just say one thing though? I like her outfit, but I feel like the black really stands out against her pinks. Which kind of irks me a little, but what do I have to say about my own self? So, so yeah. The Witch of Certainty. She embodies the idea that hard workers are rewarded and is highly respected even by humans. Though she is a witch, she does not stray far from the concepts of human. For that reason, her power as one worshipped by humans is incalculable. However, she is fickle about whose efforts she chooses to reward, and in many cases, she bestows her favor upon those who can please her the most. Her massive, swift, and terrifying power can cause any witch to submit in an instant. However, she is often reckless, and Burncastle was able to take full advantage of that. Is she reckless? From how Burncastle was talking about her, it seemed like she 
does plan her moves and chooses the best move all the time. Looking at the sticks, they are advanced level furniture created by Beatrice, can move on her own accord but cannot disobey her summoner's orders, possesses significant power even in human form, but her terrifying full potential is truly unleashed only upon returning to her original form as one of the seven sticks of purgatory and soaring at the enemy at high speeds. Haughty and arrogant, but actually feels pleasure from submission. Okay. They are all about the same. And the only thing that changes is, I guess, the little bit of text at the bottom. Nothing but a jealous crybaby. She'll do whatever it takes to get what she wants. Satan is really grumpy, but actually wants others to get angry with her. <laughs> with her. Belfragor, thoughtful and hardworking, because of this, she corrupts her masters. Interesting. Mammon is really greedy. Once she decides she wants something, she will sacrifice anything and everything to get it. Weasel Bob is in fact a gourmet, would use any ingredients to make a good meal, even her own body. Oh goodness. Asmodeus. At that age where she wants a boyfriend, <laughs> would give up her life for love. Because as Asmodeus is, um, lust, is it? Let's look. Kinzo is a witch. <laughs> Kinzo, Battler, and Maria are, are on the witch side. That's, that's super interesting, to be honest. A self-taught human mage, his natural talent and level of knowledge are nothing special, but when his nearly insane powers of concentration and dedication were transformed into magical power, he awakened as a great mage. His power is at least great enough that he was able to summon Beatrice and form a contract with her. Though his power is great, it is also extremely lopsided. In particular, he specialized in summoning and barriers, so perhaps it is fitting to call him a summoner instead. Oh, B Kinzo. Kinzo would have a great time um, in an isekai, I think. What about Battler? An unfortunate young man to whom Beatrice has taken a liking. A human who inherited the black blood from Kinzo inherited the massive resistance to magical power that Kinzo was born with. Oh, that's interesting. Ironically, it was this trait that made it so hard for Kinzo to succeed as a mage. A massive magic defense can be an ace in the hole for a battle against a witch. Kinzo has begun to lose this power with age, but Battler's power is still on the rise. Perhaps it's understandable why Beatrice tried to crush it as soon as possible. So, Battler is just naturally immune to to the magic. Is that why he hasn't died once in the different ways that everyone else has died in the, in the twilight, according to the epitaph? Maybe, maybe that's how it is. How about Maria? A little mage who has inherited the black blood from Kinzo. Unlike Kinzo, she was gifted with natural talent and began to tread the path of the mage while still young. That said, her power is still weak and she is no more than an apprentice. However, she is skilled with enchantments, which bestow magical powers upon objects, and the magical items she creates compete with those of the Meister class. Different classes now. I'm gonna bet that Genji is an advanced level of furniture. But they do not say it. He is an earliest. He is an earliest. He is the earliest furniture. Which he created. Kinzo created him. Serve him and him alone with complete loyalty. Though he was Kinzo's first creation, he was made with the help of a high class demon. So though there were several flaws in his initial specs, he concealed a great potential within himself. In the many years following that, he began to mature and compensate for his many deficiencies, turning himself into the nearly flawless butler furniture that he is now. 
he is approaching the limit of his service life, but the magical power he can unleash for an instant rivals Kinzo's. Oh goodness, the whole thing about furniture is still so... It's so crazy, it's insane. Shannon? Shannon is Kinzo's handmade furniture in the purest sense, which he created without borrowing the power of demons. Though there were problems with several of her initial specs, she was given a very rare and precious thing. A heart! Oh, oh goodness, that is so interesting because... Beatrice, the whole thing with Beatrice and Shannon was that Shannon couldn't love and therefore she... She isn't a human, that she is furniture. But Kinzo gave her a heart. But from where did he get the heart from, I wonder? It seems that, as a result of his long personal experience, Kinzo came to believe that the power created by the heart contains within it a strong magic. That... That's another interesting one, because of the whole thing with love that Beatrice keeps talking about, and with Kinzo, and what he said about, um, I think what he did to Beatrice. I feel like all of it has something to do with love and perhaps the heart. In the lengthy span of time following that, she began to mature, becoming exceptionally skilled with power of a protective or repulsive nature, such as magical barriers. Because of this, in the realm of barriers alone, she possessed an immense mage class level of power. Mage class level referring to being on par with Kinzo, maybe? And what about Hanan? The last furniture created by Kinzo thus far, so there are only three so far. Making use of all his previous experience, Kinzo managed to implement a set of flawless specs. Kenan was also given a heart, but it was much weaker than Shannon's. Where did he get a heart from? Perhaps because Kinzo felt a sense of approaching personal danger related to his fortune as he neared the end of his life, he bestowed Kenan with the rare power to fight and protect. However, he hasn't yet matured very far and is unable to control his power and speed. Oh, that's the end. This is all so... interesting. But we cannot execute them, not on the witch's side, so let's move to the human side. I'm going to execute everyone in order first. So, Faus, Natsuhi, Eva, Hideyoshi, Rudolph, and Kirie. And I think I've already gone through this entire thing. And the next one would be Jessica and Kenan. Kenan is missing, but he is dead. Next would be Goda, not Goda, uh, Kumasawa and Nanjo. Finishing touches yet to come, but this alone isn't enough. Interesting that the stakes... The stakes are not mentioned this time. Not not for... Umasawa or... Nanjo. Afterwards, it's Goda. George. And Shannon. <sighs> this part always gets me. The chef's goose was cooked. And afterwards, we finally will have Kinzo. And... Battler. Oh, this is new for me. Surrendered once to the witch, but pulled himself together and made the decision to fight once more. I see. So the witch has find Battler to be a toy worth breaking. Then that explains why she breaks him a little, fixes him, and then breaks him again. 
torture is meaningless if you kill the subject. You have to alternate between causing them pain and letting them rest. That's horrible. Rosa? That's not you. Maria? Satisfied for now. She is missing. All of them are missing. All the ones... The last four are always missing. Oh, but Genji forgot. Did he die? I don't think I saw him die. He is missing. Okay, but he died. <laughs> Let's execute Beatrice. Oh? Oh? That's... Oh? <laughs> it's interesting. She can die twice. If I execute her once, she just changes to her... Um... Human form? Both the reason and the purpose of her visit are unknown, but she does have the one-winged eagle on her thigh. If I execute her again, it's futile. Yes. There is one single way to kill her. That is still something that I am wondering. And I grasp this method in the palm of my hand. I don't know. Can I execute her once more? No, I cannot. But... Oh, I executed him again. So there is a difference. Okay, so everyone is executed. Oh, Kumasawa. Oh, that's new. That's new. Her corpse, which had gone missing, was later found in the courtyard. At that time, it was found with a weapon shaped like a stake, having, having been rammed into the ankle. Okay. That becomes the 8th twilight. Now I feel like I have to execute everyone more than once. It, which feels bad. Okay, let's try. Let's go through everyone. Yeah, okay. I'm satisfied. We have new things. Okay, her butterfly brooch. I almost forgot about it, to be honest. Okay, reading, reading through this butterfly brooch thing it seems like in the first place Shannon and George's love for each other were true to begin with <laughs> and I guess you could say that Beatrice was truly lying in a different sense because she said that there was no hope for either for Shannon to ever get with George without the help of the brooch but the brooch ironically becomes more dramatic the effects are and it will not be useful if you don't have the activation cost which she says is blind love in any case it seems like shannon never really needed the brooch at all to begin with which is really really an interesting point i think I think when it comes to the letters from the witch, the one that really stands out the most would be the second letter from the chapel. It really doesn't sound like uh, Beatrice, typically at, at all. Well, it doesn't really sound like her, but it could be her. But at the same time, it doesn't really sound like her compared to how formal she writes in the other letters. The second one is just quite different. The whole thing about Candyland too. Well, I think that concludes episode 2 with the tea party and this mystery tea party. <laughs> two tea parties. Um, we will start episode 3 next week. I hope that it will be more optimistic for all of us. I do not want to cry anymore. <laughs> I don't want to cry anymore. But yes, it looks very fun. I feel like episode 3, we will see a little bit more of 
the Ushiromiya siblings past, I think we will see more. It's just that the background of this uh, title screen right now just looks like it was in the past. Because maybe it doesn't have the dark clouds and everything. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed episode 2. <laughs> it was a wilder ride than I could have imagined. And I, I hope episode 3 doesn't disappoint. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!